God is good, and even though Pampin Razbon is not out, we have to entertain ourselves some way, guys. And today I want to talk about a new option that we have, or fairly new, pretty new, uh, Legends of Aria. So, this new MMO, which is hearkening back to the days of Ultima Online. And if there's three games that I love here at the Nathan Napalm channel, it would be Ultima Online, EverQuest, Dark Age of Camelot, Final Fantasy XI. Those are the four MMOs I consider to be truly classic to me. Now, I know people have all kinds of ideas. RuneScape, for a lot of people, I just didn't play it. There's lots of different uh, MMOs that bring and harken people back to those classic old golden days of MMOs. And Legends of Aria is trying to harken back to Ultima Online. So, in my opinion, the way I see it is to satisfy people who were interested in Ultima Online, our new option would be Legends of Aria. If you're interested in EverQuest, if that was your MMO, then we have Pantheon Rise of the Fallen coming. If Dark Age of Camelot was your game, we have Camelot Unchained coming. And if Final Fantasy XI was your game, well, we don't have anything for you. I'm sorry. Uh, you're, you're screwed. <laughs> I'm going to say Final Fantasy XI, Pantheon's for you too. You know what? Yes, Pantheon's for you too. Uh, so there we go. You do have an option. Anyway, today I want to talk about Legends of Aria. Looks like a really cool game. And um, I did some research, I played it, and uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about what it offers, okay, and what it's good for, and just explain the game. So let's get right to it. So Legends of Aria was originally known as Shards Online during its development. What is Legends of Aria? It is a sandbox multi, you know, MMO, basically. Uh, it's from a company called Citadel Studios, and it's buy to play, okay? So you don't need a subscription fee to play it or what have you. And it does have official servers. It also has community-run servers. And right now, it's considered it's in an early access state. That's what I'm going to call it. I think, I think they're actually calling it pre-alpha. But guys, this is early access, okay? You pay to get in. This is early access. Uh, it's on Steam. And it's early access, okay? So I don't care what they say. This is early access. So it's only on Windows. Uh, but they are talking about getting it out for Mac and Linux. Uh, but what it does, uh, let's talk about some of the features that make it unique, alright? First up, we gotta talk about player housing. So, you can get a house and just put it anywhere in the world. It, like, if you played Ultima Online, you know what I'm talking about. And you don't have to play the game long. When you leave the starting city of your choice, you're gonna see players houses everywhere and they're gonna have uh, merchants that, that, that they've hired to be selling their their stuff uh, and it's really cool I love it that is you know you can just go out and go shopping like uh, this is uh, I, I don't like to shop I hate to shop but you know in an MMO for some reason I'll do things I don't like to do in real life so you can go around you can look for stuff and the decorating and the building your house is pretty intricate just like it was in Ultima Online so there's blueprints available in the game I think there's around 12 or 13 of them you have complete control though over all these items so that you place around your house you know furniture your your storage containers things you've collected crafting stuff all that kind of thing now Let's talk about the leveling up, because leveling up is very different than most MMOs, but it is super similar to Ultima Online. So it's a skill-based character development. And when I say skill-based, I don't mean there's skills and there's levels. I mean there's skills, okay? So your skills, they gain naturally as you use them. So you get tiny little skill-ups, like maybe like 0.1, you know, until it... If, if you gotta use the word level up, then it would be when that skill point gets a whole extra point. So when it goes from 20 to 21, so it would be like 20.1, 20.2, and so forth. So there are 20 skills in the game right now. We're gonna talk about more of those. There may be a little more than 20. Now, there's also a lot of lore. So the storyline of the game, it really kind of is the lore. So, you know, it's not like you're doing a bunch of questing. Actually, you're doing no questing. Uh, this is a game where it's just, it's, it's a sandbox. You know, the, the lore is there. You can find it out by talking to the inhabitants in the game and, and find out all the knowledge and the stories and you know you got the the mortals and the gods and all that kind of stuff that you would expect in any mmo or, or fantasy based there's also crafting so there's metal smithing wood smithing fabrication alchemy and they are working right now there's a total of 144 recipes apparently for, for crafters to use to create the items uh there's taming so you know just like ultima online you go out and you tame creatures so you can't tame absolutely every creature it doesn't appear uh there's a lot though there's a lot of creatures you can tame 
they respond to you, you know, they do your bidding or what have you, and they age and they get better the longer that you're able to keep that animal tamed. So, combat. So it's tactical, skill-based combat. A lot of different abilities, a lot of different spells, and uh, skill-based abilities. So, you know, that's something that you acquire, and it's kind of weird, but um, to someone that's not familiar with it, but basically, you have an ability book where everything's listed there, and where you can use uh, your your points, that you your ability points, which are gained almost like a level, so as you kill things, as you do things, you gain these points, and they, they get to 100%, and then you get a skill point, and then as you gather up the skill points, you can go into your book, right there on your character screen, and you can level that up up so pretty cool then we have pvp all right we got to talk about pvp okay so when you leave a town protected by the guards uh, and you go out into the world it's unrestricted pvp so players are asked to stick together protect each other and there are penalties for for death um, and it depends on the server but for the most part you're looking at full loot here if you die okay so the thing is, though, there's major penalties for doing that, for, for just killing innocent people, okay? You start the game as innocent, literally. That's what it's called. And your name, above your character's body, is going to be blue, okay? Now, if you start breaking the law, uh, you go into, I forget what it's called, but it's like a neutral state, okay? And, and at that point, you, the rules for you change a little bit. And then if you continue breaking the law, killing people, etc., um, then you become red, okay? So, in other words, you're a murderer, uh, you're a criminal. So, when you're red, a, an innocent blue can kill a red and get no penalty because that was a criminal, right? So, if you're red, though, it's very ridiculously difficult to get back to being blue again. And guards will attack a red on sight. Okay, so it's a little hard for them to get around, do their thing, because they're a murderer, right? They're a criminal, so they're outlawed. I think that's what they might call it, an outlaw. Anyway, anyway, moving on. There's also the Catacombs Dungeon. Catacombs is this big, huge, three-level dungeon that, that changes around and, and mixes itself up every couple of hours. So, it's got traps, it's got awesome, you know, mobs in it, and, and, and that's where all the loot is. Okay, so that's for players to go explore and hunt. If you're the dungeon crawler type... That's your dungeon for now, would be the catacombs. Uh, also, there are other dungeons, by the way. Um, there's one, actually, in the starting city I did that I spent most of my time uh, that I've played so far going into and, and trying to get my abilities up. So there's more, but that, I guess, is the premier dungeon, the big one, I guess you could say. So we also have uh, bosses. So they have, like, Forest Ogres, the Cultist King, the Spider Queen, the Demon of Ko, the Greater Dragon, the Guardian of the Void, and Death. So they have some bosses in the world right now. There's also plenty of titles. You can earn in-game titles. Uh, there's 150 plus of them. Uh, Leader of the Revolution, Bane of the Dragon Age, etc., etc. Depending on what you do, things you do in the game, you can earn a title for it. That kind of thing. Uh, faction system. So there are currently only really two factions. Uh, the Villagers and the Cultists. So depending on which one you pick to do tasks for or, or, or play in their realm i guess you could say then you gain faction which gives you, which gives you access to titles and more tasks and uh, you know access to special areas of the map now i know i just told you earlier there really aren't any quests and there's really not however there are these kind of tasks you can do um just for like faction kind of thing it's really not a questing system and that's definitely not how you're going to be leveling up it's you know it's more like questing in everquest where you don't do it really to level up you do it old school everquest to just get things or faction etc okay then we, the game also has guilds of course so uh, players can create guilds and uh, claim their own lands go to war with other guilds uh, that kind of thing as far as character customization i'm not gonna lie uh, initially when you start the game it's pretty awful you know like have a different hair color pick up you're gonna be a, a a male or female and uh pick a couple of colors of skin you got a few options for the face that's about it okay so a lot like Ultima Online. Uh, not not much character customization. Be honest, when you're playing a game like this zoomed out so far, who cares? Your customization comes in actually, um, you know, dressing up your, your tune, honestly. That's, that's, that's where you're going to get your customization from. So, um, about the community servers and the modding. So, that's something I haven't dived into yet, but I do know a little bit of information about it. So, there are some running right now. Um, there's one that's mimicking Ultima Online, and that one was pretty cool. I did actually check that one out for just a moment, and it was pretty darn throwback to Ultima Online, I gotta say. Uh, so, I thought that was pretty cool. 
but apparently you can get your own server and you know host your own world on it and kind of build your own world the layout and all that kind of thing seems to be pretty customizable i'm going to assume based on the ultima online one seemed i don't know the nice way to put it almost copyright infringing so it must be pretty open i guess now that's really all i know about that now i want to talk a little bit more in depth about uh legends of aria uh, first of all let's talk about my experience with it and what i think so far and once again this is a big game this is a long-term game this isn't something you just play for a couple hours and you you know you you got it um so i'm not going to even pretend like i've got enough experience to really tell you everything i can just tell you initially logging on beginning your journey if you enjoy a game that does not hold your hand at all I mean at all you're gonna love it okay just kind of get you just in the world and it's just like you know go do what you want to do if you want to just do crafting in this game that is ridiculously viable okay crafting is huge in this game it would be very hard I would say to play this game and not craft I, I feel like you almost have to craft if you're gonna play Legends of Aria now let's talk about the elephant in the room okay because recently Legends of Aria uh, talked about a their their cash shop okay they have a cash shop all right and they mentioned putting xp potions in the game and when i say that of course this isn't a level up based game a skill based game so what it basically does it makes you skill up faster and people lost their mind they were mad right because legends aria was very huge just like every mmo by the way saying oh we're gonna have a cash shop but it's not gonna be pay to win and then they put this XP potion in, and people are like, whoa, dude, that's kind of pay to win. You know, like, I'm with you, all right? I'm with you. I don't like that crap. I don't like cash shops at all, man. If you got a cash shop in your game, you're begging. You're begging to piss people off. That's just the way I feel. It's 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 a slippery slope, you know? Even like, uh, for example, and I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about when it launched, Black Desert Online. When it launched, not now, when it launched. And they just had the cosmetic stuff you could wear. You know, and that's all it was. <sighs> the thing is, guys, even if it's just cosmetic, the problem is that the MMO, their art team has to make money, right? So if they're going to spend time developing art or gear or anything like that, they're going to put all the really good stuff into the cash shop in one form or another because they have to make money. You know, companies have to make money. All right, how they decide to do it, they're either going to be sneaky about it or they're going to be upfront about it. I would just prefer you be upfront. You charge me a subscription fee, you charge me for the game, whatever, whatever work, whatever floats your boat, buddy. But you know, I want to know that's how they're making their money. I don't want to be like, oh, it's a free to play game, it's free. Oh my gosh, maybe they live off of advertisements in the game. You know, like, come on, dude, this isn't a mobile game, this is a PC game. Can we please just get past the free to play or the cash shop and the loot boxes and the come on gamers don't like it we don't like it it's pretty obvious that gamers do not like it but anyway i went to the cash shop yesterday and that would be on february 2nd 2019 and it wasn't there i don't know if they took it off or it just hasn't launched yet but the only thing they had on there was you know your typical cash shop stuff you, there was some shields they look cool there was some uh there was a uh a, a separate section there where it had um these uh i think they called them runes and you can like you know say you've skilled you know you maxed out your skills okay so there's nothing left to technically get skill in uh well you if you you can buy this rune you can continue going out in the world and getting more skills and they go in the inside this rune right uh because normally you'd be getting nothing because you're skilled out you know skilled all the way up it would go into the rune and then you can take that room and, and give it to someone or trade it with another person i think or or definitely use it for one another tune that you make so that's what i saw i did not see the xp potions maybe they just haven't launched yet but they're not in the game currently when i did this so i really can't knock them for that uh but for god's sake guys uh please be careful with the cash shop stuff man it's a dangerous world legends of aria is fun very old school if you liked Ultima Online back in the day, and you've been wishing, man, I wish somebody would do a game like Ultima Online. Well, quit wishing. It's here. Legends of Aria definitely, definitely, like ridiculously, is like Ultima Online was back in the day. 
So if that's what you've been looking for, there you go. You got your game. Congratulations. All Ultima Online mega fans, you have a new game to play, and I think you'll love it. And if you don't, I can't imagine why, because it's literally an updated new Ultima Online. Uh, so, guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think of Legends of Aria. I will be playing around with it. I'm not going to lie. Um, the top-down view kind of thing kind of isn't for me. But that's okay. I know it is for a lot of people. I know a lot of people have been looking for this game. And I'm still going to play it because I did play Ultima Online. Uh, it was technically my first MMO. So, uh, graphic MMO, I should say. So, uh, you know, I liked it. I thought it was cool. Um, and I will be playing some Legends of Aria. I'm not going to go full-blown into it. Because of the same reason that I left you to try games like EverQuest, Dark Age of Camelot. I don't get as immersed in a game when it's top down like that with the, what should I call it, the, uh, the Diablo style camera angle or the uh, CRPG camera angle. I don't get as immersed as, in, in that as I do if it's, you know, more zoomed in, more right there on my character, looking around the world 3D kind of thing. Legendary looks beautiful, plays beautifully, it's very old school, it's very populated, uh, the server I got was on had a lot of people running around, a lot of people around my level, or my skill level, um, and hanging out right there, so definitely doing well. Guys, check it out, let me know what you think, and if you are new to the Nathan Napalm channel, and you love some old school MMORPG, then please consider subscribing, as that's what we talk about here at the Nathan Napalm channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video, thank you very much, God bless, and happy gaming. But please just subscribe, I can't even describe. Being part of my tribe, I'll even offer you a prize, but just please just subscribe, and hit the bell notification too.